So hello, welcome. This is Julius Horsthaus, fractal artist. I am uh, going to do a little tutorial and I thought I'm going to do it backwards this time because going just from start to finish seemed so um, obvious, been done a million times. And actually it's really hard to do because you never know when you start if you're going to find anything good. So I posted this yesterday on my Instagram and this is a little loop. And I think I can show probably a little bit in a better or um, rather higher full screen. Um, these are just little tests, but I think someone maybe commented on like the process. So let's just deconstruct this. Let's let's go um, start with the with the final result, and I'll show you my After Effects file, which is basically the last step. And then from there we go back. We go back into Mandelbulb 3D. You know, we see where all the layers come from and all that kind of stuff. I think it's a fun way to approach it. So I should say before I posted this, a day before that, I posted a, almost the, the same one, but slower and a little bit more empty. So this one is the same animation, but it misses um, one, one layer. So let's go into After Effects, where we have the actual, um, we have all the layers. This is basically what has been what has been rendered. This is the very final layer that I've worked on. Uh, this is basically what I've exported. So what we have here is we have a adjustment layer and it has the looks effect on it. So this is quite a big part of the look of the whole thing. It's basically just, you know, like color correction filter. Uh, but if I switch off, it'll just look a little bit more muted in terms of color palettes. Uh, and even the sort of the, the, the very high, the saturated colors, they, they still look more muted. I, I When I actually, when you are in Mandelbulb, you're always, I think, better off using low saturation and muted colors. Never go full black, full white, or full saturation. Um, because if you don't do that, you can st you still have that, that room to do these kind of color corrections. And as you can see, it'll just look a lot more vibrant um, if you if you spend some time in color correction. And we can actually, let's just have a look at the actual um, looks since we're doing this whole thing backwards. Um, so what we have is, this probably came from a preset. I think the preset actually is the one called uh, Color Play. It's either Versus or Potato. Yeah, so it's Versus. I can tell um, from the things I see underneath here. Uh, pretty good for these sort of high, uh, very sort of purpley, uh, dark uh, LED type of uh, black light uh, um, colors. The shoulder doesn't do much apart from if you know a little bit about graphs and stuff, you can see here what the shoulder sort of does to sort of um, the very much the highlights will sort of like make them a little bit. So here they blow out completely in the white. And then here you can see there's more detail in those very, like very white uh, highlights. Uh, then we have a little curves that sort of does a little bit of a contrast thing. This four way color, I don't think I've touched it. It was sort of there uh, from the preset, the haze flare. It, creates a little bit of a hazy effect here, sort of takes this flare, puts it there, uh, or sort of this this highlight sort of um, copies it to the other side as if the um, as if the matte box is reflecting light or something like that. A matte box is basically what you have on your lens if you have a real camera to sort of shield, um, spill light from coming into the lens from uh, uh, other angles than the angles that you are actively filming, it reduces lens flares and st stuff, but it can also actually re reflect light and do some other weird things. Um, and then we have the matte uh, diffusion, which I use a lot. Uh, this sort of does that that white diffusion or highlights uh, bloom or blowout, or um, it's the same effect as uh, putting some Vaseline on the lens. I think they used to do it in the old days. Uh, and here's some color correction that I used. So nothing too fancy there, but that will um, that will hopefully make that clear. Um, and then there's some couple of other things going on, but I think I'll just go here then uh, for now. And we'll just look at some other layers. As you can see, this is a really slow comp. 
and it's mostly slow because so we have this this is what it would look like with the with the looks we have some chromatic uh, universe chromatic aberration see here you can see what that does so this is without this is with it'll take the sort of the edges and a sort of transforms them a little bit and a sort of creates this chromatic aberration so splits um, the white color to to um, its components of of red green and blue basically and it can sometimes create a very nice looking if you not overdoing it um, especially if we work with a lot of colors it can sort of take out that really use that prism kind of feel or maybe um, do these like older lenses that actually have a lot of chromatic aberration now this is a very subtle effect where there's two duplicates in here and I'm not sure if you could see that but there's basically a little reflection or whatever happens here it's just happening here too and here as well you can see this shape here and there and that's basically just a transform on two layers where with a very low opacity so if I take this opacity uh, all the way up um, although this is one of the layers you can see what it does it sort of adds the thing uh, and then there is a position offset so it's just taking this and then positioning it there but then very muted I don't often do that I did it with this one and it sort of adds to that kind of glassy look uh, that you get so let's just take these all away uh, and then we have motion blur I used pixel motion blur uh, which is the built-in one from um, from After Effects. It'll just analyze the frames and it'll just calculate the motion blur in between. It's a slow effect, but it can really help, um, especially with fast mo movement, moving things here. I think we're not on a frame where there's a lot of fast motion, um, but it will sort of blur between two frames, um, smoothening out the motion. Now... This is that ghostly effect that, that, that I added a day later and sort of re-uploaded without it. It's just this black thing, the, as the first version was. And if we just isolate it, it's actually, and also again, this is just 36% opacity screened on top. It's the same render with different settings, but we'll probably look into those later uh, as we go further back. So take that away we get this and we have the depth of field which is also applied on the on this specific layer by the way and this is just um, creating focal blur as you can see without the focal blur it, everything is super sharp and especially with these sort of really small things you'll start to get a lot of jitter and um, a whole bunch of horrible aliasing artifacts uh, which I just hid basically um, using depth of field of course, for depth of field uh, effect, you need the Z buffer. So here uh, it's pointing at the um, layer number 11, which is right here. And if we look at that layer, then that's what it looks like. So it's not even a great Z buffer and there's a lot of, um, but it works, it, it worked pretty well. And I had to sort of tell it where to focus. And you do that with this. So I could focus on the background here. Oh, and th there we go. Oh, sorry, this is actually a foreground. And now everything else is out of focus. Uh, yep, so taking off the depth of field, and we're left with, what are we left with? Uh, three layers. One of which is the colored layer. Actually, no, sorry, only two layers. This is the set buffer. This is the colored layer. Taking, uh, if we get rid of that, we just get the, the very, the base layer or the beauty layer, which has a little curves to sort of, make it a bit darker, otherwise it would look like this. This is the, the main layer that I rendered. Um, and then we have the color layer, which has a Luma mat, and the mat that actually, uh, that it uses looks like this. And this is co this coming from this RGB um, layer that I had. I could change the position of what it highlights, but just imagine that the whatever white, whatever is white is actually revealing the color layer. So without the color layer, uh, we get this. And if I take the color layer completely and I don't mask it, it's just this um, thing. It's just this very bright, and it's bright because it's got an exposure 
and with a multiplier of almost four here. So it's just super, super bright. Uh, After Effects is working in 32 bits. So taking down the um, the brightness of the of the screen, all that information is still there. And the look sweet um, a bl bloom effect, for instance, is actually using that information to sort of uh, blow out those highlights. So it looks really nice uh, with all those other effects. Otherwise, it looks li like right now it just looks horrible. And so if I use this mask again to take this layer, that's why we have here uh, these, tr these uh, track mats uh, using a Luma mat. We just take that, um, like we only reveal that color, that ver those very bright and saturated colors where that mask is. Now that mask, again, if I change that, we can see, now we see the effect on the actual color layer, what that does. So that's really trippy, it looks very nice. Uh, and I think it really sort of, it's it's interesting to revisit old fractals and, and do this because you actually, you find patterns in there, which I'm sort of sometimes really surprised by. Let's see if I can sort of get a still of like these, Oh, this is going to be, oh, here we go. So that kind of, these kind of patterns were sort of previously, in, you know, hidden or it's just invisible. And um, because I've rendered almost the same fractal before, uh, but now we see those new sort of patterns that are, that you can sort of reveal with this technique, which which I really like. And by the way, here you can also see that sort of, that um, th those two duplicate layers very well here. You just see this part is just duplicated there and it sort of makes it look a bit glassy. Maybe it looks like it's just a reflection or something, even though it's just a simple effect. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's really what makes it interesting. Of course, if I just take this layer it's all an animation, so I'm just showing it right now on a still, just because it's very hard to um, to scrub through the timeline. Also, these frames are not on my local drive; they're just on my um, NAS uh, network attached storage, which is a bit slow, but it's great for rendering because all the computers can um, can render to it. Uh, so, yeah, that's just the, the that's how that works. So again, going just from that very first, very basic layer, which was the first layer that I rendered. Um, well, actually, I mean, I probably rendered three of the three layers simultaneously. Uh, it would just look like this. And I have actually done stuff like this before. I think my VJ pack called um, uh, Inter. I don't remember the name. What is it called? Intergalactic? No, it's something inter... What the hell? Interdimensional, obviously. Interdimensional VJPEG has a lot of those... Uh, has a lot of that look right there. These kind of things. Okay, so... That's After Effects, so how do I get those layers? So look at, let's look at the very bare layers again, the very, the renders that I've actually rendered. So the, the very first one is the, this is the, the main beauty pass, there it is. And then we have the color pass, here it is. So exactly the same camera motion, everything is exactly the same, except for the colors and some settings in the um, lighting things like ambient occlusion and shadows. And then we have the RGB, which is twi twice as large. That's just to make sure it's, um, it's not doing weird things in aliasing when you apply that, that colorama trick, which I haven't shown, by the way, that RGB layer. I, this is the, this, um, this is a colorama effect. So the RGB layer looks like this. It has just pure, like a rainbow thing in it. And it takes the U and it maps it to this ring, which is all black, except for these, this one um, white thing here. Now, if I take this, you can sort of see what that does to the image. I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with, with stuff like this, but you're basically mapping a U-cycle 
to um, this color ramp, and I've just created this uh, little, you know, uh, white. So it's all black, and then there's a little white, and then ro rotating this just just changes that where on the location of the U cycle that falls. All right. So uh, again, just looking at that bare. Uh, RGB layer, it just looks like this. Again, the exact same animation, just rendered twice the size and uh, with these sort of color effects applied. And then we have the Z buffer, um, which would basically be the, the, the same in all three cases. Uh, just in the last case, it would be twice as big, and this is what the Z buffer looks like. The Z buffer basically uh, measures distance towards the camera, and the further something is away, the darker it is and the closer it is to the camera the lighter it is it's an 8-bit unfortunately um, uh, which is usually not it's it's fine for other kind of uh, things but for set buffer 8-bit um, can actually be uh, uh, not enough but uh, we don't have a choice when we work with Mandelbulb 3d okay so let's go to Mandelbulb 3d and let's just look at um, these I think I'm not going to go into, there's another tutorial that goes to those sort of, it's called seamless, uh, um, seamless loop and, uh, and, and, and lights. And that goes into how to render also those, um, those other layers. But let's just go to the main layer uh, um, of this thing. And let me just have a little, it's called, yeah. So let's open. Just going to open the uh, the main one. I think that's the best thing to do. So here it is, and let's have a look at the uh, at the formula. Let's just first let's go here and get it here. The only thing that is animated, except for the camera, which I have animated, is the x multiplier up from the very first um, formula slot. So this whole thing. Creates this very interesting liquid looking weird sort of stacking animation that ends with everything becoming really flat. And here it's almost, uh, here it gets very noisy, which is basically where the animation ends. So it started probably here or something like that and goes like this, 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 this. So you create the animation like this. Uh, Let's just render one frame. Here we go. We come back to this picture later, by the way. It's there for a reason, the, the goldish stuff. Um, here we go. So I take this. I have my lighting preset that is called RGB or actually Tron Palace RGB for some reason one day. I made that and I I have it right here, like this. And what I do is I get rid of the ambient shadows because it doesn't need to calculate that for this pass and I don't need the hard shadows. So I just do this and I go to processing and I'll go, okay, all the light color settings, all the hard shadow settings and all the ambient light settings. And even, I think this one may have had no, it didn't. Well, if it had reflections, I would need to sort of cancel those out as well by, and I'll just go, okay, put all the keyframes, sorry, put all the values to the keyframes and re-render the keyframe preview images and boom. Now we have this exact same animation with other lighting, um, you know, assigned to it. So now I'll just, I use the same output folder, which is actually a network location. So every single one of my machines um, has this assigned to N. So it will work very well as a network render. I'll just save this as the same name, but I'll do an underscore RGB. Um, so I won't overwrite the other ones. Uh, and they'll just, I need to render it twice though. There's no, there's no way to actually only render it once, but as you can see, this renders pretty fast. And in this case, what I did is I had to render it twice the size, but I'm not using anti-aliasing. So instead of rendering it, um, like this, I would go 2160 by 2160, but only one anti-aliasing. Uh, and then I would have to double the DE stop because, ah, very tricky here, but you would check what the DE stop is here in calculation is 
but now I have to put it 0.8 because it wouldn't do that automatically. So I do that right here in DE stop 0.8, put the values to all the keyframes. And now I can just save, boom, boom, and press render and it goes. Okay, let's go back further because we're going backwards today. So let's have a look at these, um, it's this one. Let's have a look at the formula. So we've got this um, lin combine x, y, z. In the second slot, we have a rotate 4D uh, with two of the uh, six rotations going to 180. So sometimes I'll just go for a rotate. Sometimes it's pretty in interesting to just see what happens if you do a 180 on it in this case. Apparently that was a good idea. What happens if I put both to zero? Oh, I could have just as well um, actually just gotten rid of the formula here. Uh, yeah, so it does something very interesting. Third slot is an amazing box two that has you know, a bunch of, bunch of stuff going on here and has four iterations. And then has a Coke cube with a number of iterations that is six million, 6.8 million. Uh, that's pretty weird, and it actually comes from a an error that Mandelbaum made at some point. Basically, if you have something that is that many number of iterations, whatever comes after, in this case a J cube and a reciprocal, it doesn't matter. It won't do anything because first it needs to do six million iterations at the coke cube before it even starts coming here. But we have an iteration cutoff, obviously. Otherwise, your renders would um, continue infinite. Um, yeah just infinitely. So usually that's around maybe 80 or something, depending on how um, much you're zoomed in. So it will never even get to the 6 million. Now, why did I why did I ever put that number in? Uh, that's interesting. And that's actually, I saved it once, a formula, and then it, it, it reopened it with this crazy number. It's just a, just a, a bug. Um, but it's an interesting bug because it means that we can, uh, we can trace back where this specific uh, um, this specific like combination of formulas comes from, and that's actually where I sort of wanted to go with this um, with this going back. I made this a couple of days ago, and it's now 2021. It's the summer in the northern hemisphere, um, but I I I tried to look where these this came from, and I traced it all the way back to 2015. I I, I very often reuse my own work. I self-plagiarize, um, if I'm saying that word correctly. Uh, and uh, uh, this is, you, you get a lot of different, um, uh, I often just, you know, I often load old um, parameters. So in this case, the one from that uh, inter, uh, interdimensional VJ pack, and I applied this new technique that I just, you know, just recently discovered with the with the RGB uh, on this. Um, so then we go back to 2018 and we figure out, okay, well, well what were we doing there? So um, going here to the backward tutorial, I am going to open, this is also M3A file. Okay, so Bluesphere Temple. Um, let's have a look. So Blue Sphere Temple. So this is from 2018. Opening it up. Okay, look at this. Uh, actually, let's open the other one first. I'm thinking um, I want to open the processed. I think this is the one I want to open. So it's very similar, as you can see. Hopefully, you, as you can see. And uh, again, it starts here, the first formula is the lin combine xyz and then we have rotate 4d with the 180 180 here uh amazing box four iterations again that's all the same and then the co cube now apparently here it has seven million the other one was 6.8 million i have no idea why that's different did i just and then again we have stuff here that's like the j cube and the reciprocal that could just be anything i would it would never wouldn't matter at all what you what you do here because it would never get there because the fourth slot already has seven million. Um, so again, very similar. And I don't know exactly what I would have animated here. Perhaps again, this same thing because it's more interesting than animating this. If you animate this, it'll sort of distort it sideways. 
making a little bit of a mess. Um, same thing here. So this would be a good, so it's almost similar. I think that same day, that's when that weird thing happened uh, with that very high number. Um, because if I open something, the just the, the Blue Sphere Temple from the same day, but so this is 2256. Now this is 2170. So this is, what is that? An, an hour and a half before that, apparently I was playing with another uh, set of parameters. Uh, Lin, combine XYZ, rotate 4D, amazing box with four iterations and a co-cube with only one iteration. So instead of seven million, it was one. So it, first it was this, and then it jumped for some weird reason to seven million. So here we've got the J cube probably actually making a difference. And there it is, making a difference. And the reciprocal as well, for sure. Uh, so what happens now, it's only doing the co-cube once, it's jumping, doing the J cube three twice, and then going to the reciprocal, and then jumping back to the first slot. Um, and in, in, in higher iterations as well. So I think this was maybe the first one of that sort of intergalactic uh, look that I had for that VJ pack, although this might even be one of the, I'm not even sure actually if this is actually one of the clips. I think I thought it would look like a little bit like a sort of landing of a, uh, what do you call it, a hot air balloon or something at some point, right, like right here. Um, so there's an interesting find that I did back in 2018, but I want to go for, uh, back further. I want to sort of, I want to I want to see what sparked this combination of formulas um, back in 2018. So but we got this, and then we have those medieval future castles. That's quite different, though. I think, yeah, that's an M. So I have to open it like this. Open um, medieval future castles. It's not an animation. It's a still. Looks pretty weird. Uh, I could try and render. Oh, it's quite low res, so it might render fast. Definitely not the best, but it has the same DNA. It has the same parameters. I think I was trying to get some sort of like a like a city, maybe I called it Tirith because I wanted it to look like Minas Tirith. Maybe it does, probably doesn't. Um, but again, I think if we go here, we should see that same stuff. Um, okay, we got to rotate 4D, but and then the link combine. So these two are switched. The link combine um, was in the first slot, and then uh, the rotate was in the second slot. And then the amazing box is still there, the co cube is still there, the J cube, and the reciprocal. So, what happened here is the first and the second thing were reversed. And sometimes I do that, I'll just try different things. So, it's quite easy to do that. If I want to go back, what I do is view the main, I go into the formulas. We've got lin combine in the second and the rotate in the first. I'll just press this button, plunk, and I'll take the lin combine from the second to the first and then the other one for, um, to the second. So now it still looks like a city, apparently, but now those things are reversed, and that's m mostly because of that, that 4D thing. I think this was like this, and then we had 180 here, and then 180 here. I'm just curious what we get. Do we get something alike? So I don't know exactly what the process was, uh, but this is definitely similar. Uh, let's go back further and then um, we get to something like the dark, so this was 20, this is 2017 we're now, dark gate. Uh, apparent takes a time to load, takes a while to load, that usually means it has a um, a texture, it's loading a texture. There we go. I never save the uh, M3i things, I always save the M3p. So this is quite a different kind of look. And rotate, A platinum, sin Y, co-cube, J-cube, 
and the reciprocal. So there's a, there's, a, there's a couple of differences here. We got the sin y instead of the lin combine, and then there's a couple of other changes. Um, so at some point I made this, and I wanna go back to another one, uh, which I think is the this one, which I have used a lot in my work. So this, I should probably, one second. Goldscape, so 2016. And that's this thing. I've got a couple of, couple of animations with this. Um, also, uh, a variation of this sort of temple that you see here is in my Artec House uh, Geometric Properties exhibit that's currently running at the uh, Artec House New York location at the Chelsea Market in Manhattan. Uh, and again, we got this Rotate 4D amazing box with four iterations, uh, still the same, Coke Cube, one J Cube. Uh, oh, so, and then a reciprocal in five and a translate in six. So here's something a little bit different, but you could still, you can still recognize the same formula patterns. So I've borrowed and borrowed and borrowed and borrowed and borrowed, changing small things every single time. Uh, and yeah, I think this is interesting and we can go back one further, the last one. Um, that's as far as I could trace it back, and this is called Utopia Clock Tunnel. This is M3A file, so let's open the Utopia Clock Tunnel. Um, and that looks like this. It's that, maybe that um, thing you saw at the very beginning. Uh, this is as far back as I could, as I could trace it. Again, uh, Amazing Box, CoCube, JCube, Reciprocal, Translate, um, so yeah, I don't have anything else uh, going back further to specifically see where this comes from. It, I, it it might very well be that I have just you know put some random random things together. Another possibility would be that I at some point would have uh, looked at uh, someone else's uh, work at um, what's that um, site I was always looking at at at, uh, at the time. Uh, where a lot of Mandel, where a lot of people, it's not Mandel, the the, the Facebook group, um, deviant art, of course, and then we have all these uh, formulas. So at some point, it's definitely possible that something from there, and I would have like probably credited, uh, you know, the first couple of times, but at some point, things become so distorted and weird that it it becomes something so completely different that uh, there's more of your own DNA. Let's let's put it like that than. Um, than the original one, I think. Uh, so I don't know where further back this goes. I just wanted to uh, share the the graph here in um, of this specific uh, formula. I think it's interesting to sort of see that you could that there is a sort of tree, um, almost like a fractal tree, right? Uh, following from this. So going to the beginning. I hope this is not going to crash because it was before we started with this image. And in 2015, this is also, by the way, uh, maybe I should very quickly go to the, it's a music video I did for Temple Invisible back in 2015. Everything from above, beautiful music. And there was a couple of scenes in there at the end, I believe. It's been a, been a while. These that are, um, that are basically the same formula as what we were looking at right here. So from there, we got this, um, this goldscape temple, um, as I call it, and I created this other thing once um, from it, but that never went anywhere. Um, but here I went from this weird sort of strange uh, thing into a couple of different directions. So one direction would be this interdimensional uh, look with this sort of uh, medieval or Minas Tirith castle uh, that we saw before, which is right here. And then we've got this right here. But going in a different branch from here, we also got this, um, I think I called it the large fracton collider. It's also one of the, the short films. Uh, these, they come from the same thing, but something else changed here. Maybe one of the rotations 
were different. Um, and that made this very strange uh, thing, but it comes from the same from the same set of formulas. So all these, this one comes from that one. I added some trees here and here's some water and then here are some ice, like a frozen uh, thing. And then also from here, I got this weird, more symmetrical looking uh, thing with this thing in the bottom. And I think that in its turn sparked this weird thing as well which then got turned on its side and changed into this strange statue with this weird eye coming out of it. Um, all from those same formulas. Isn't that something? And then we have these, and then from this thing, we got to um, to this thing, which is just the same thing, but with with uh, with you know different um, lighting technique. So yeah, that's the backwards tutorial um, going all the way back to 2015 into the origin of uh, this uh, fractal. Um, and that just goes to show, I think, what the... Because um, it would be very hard to sort of start, hey, we're doing a tutorial forwards where I start with this and you end... Because you, you, you never know where you're going to end up. And of course, there's a lot of dead end branches here that I've never rendered and never, you know, just never seen the light of day so you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily see those but you you, you never know where you might end up um, but this is a different way I think to look at, uh, at, at, at at how to how to tackle those things and not to be afraid to um, to to use your own formula or something that you know like a combination of formulas or the one that you that I just showed you you know just take those formulas and 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 start those um and then just make little changes you know you switch something around you you that that's that, that's the technique uh, that i think is both the most fun and the most rewarding in terms of uh payoff interesting interesting um interesting forms and shapes that we all want to see so that concludes the tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and thank you until next time